Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today you'll see me create this crazy and colourful laboratory piece for my art room. It's not a tutorial today, just for a change. It was purely made to inspire and entertain, so narration has been kept to a minimum. If you would like to see this piece at its very best, glowing in the dark under a black light, please stay tuned until the end to see how amazing it actually looks in the dark. I was inspired by Jedrek for this flame making process so I will leave a link to his video which inspired me in the description of this video because the way he made the flame on his piece really did help me with the making of the flame in this one so he deserved a big thank you for that. Once the flame was in position, I just added lots and lots and lots and lots of layers of UV resin to build up the shape of the flame and I did that quite gradually and yeah, I love the way that that turned out and how the UV resin cures so quickly. It takes about two minutes. Every time you see me flash my UV light in this video, it's actually about two minutes that that light will be on. And obviously I've just snipped it all down so you don't see all that. <laughs> I needed to drill a hole in the bottom of the, my glass Bunsen burner and I've got to say I was quite nervous about it but I did my research and I discovered that if you make a barrier with hot glue and then pour some water in the middle that really helps and also the other tip was to use a drill with a speed control so I'm using my Dremel style tool and I'm using a carbide drill bit and it took a long time but it 
it got through in the end. Here I'm just blocking the hole with some blue tack and it did a good job, nothing leaked out apart from a couple of drops right at the beginning but that worked really well once I poured in the resin. Here I'm cutting a dry erase lap board for my base and I love these because they're so shiny and they give a lovely finish, a lovely effect and they're really easy to cut as well. And I'm just going to cut the two holes in them with those um, circular drill bits. Here I'm just going to add a string of mains powered LED lights and what I am going to do is connect the LED light which is in the flame of the Bunsen burner with this string of LED lights. So it did involve a little bit of electrical work, just a little bit of soldering and I didn't record that bit because it was too awkward to do it in front of the camera and I'm not the best at soldering. Thank mm -hmm. you.
you would like to see more detail of this bubble making process, I do have another video where I concentrated a lot more on the effect you get from using real bubbles. So I will link to that in the description. And if you would like to see more about that, you can go ahead and watch that one. Here I'm using a pearlescent white acrylic paint onto the area where I've used the bubbles and once that's all on what I do is I get water on my brush and kind of dilute it and then dab it off with a cloth and it just really makes it a lot lighter and get a much nicer effect. As you will have seen, I've used UV resin a lot in this project and that's because of the speed in which it cures. It's just perfect for this, this kind of job. For the deep things, I did use normal epoxy resin for filling the jars and things like that and the test tubes. But anything small and anything quick, UV resin is just the very best thing. And that torch which I purchased really helps as well because it's really easy to just shine onto the resin instead of trying to put it under a nail lamp which is what I always did before. I love how those gems in that jar look like real bubbles, they turned out really really good.
Now I'm making my test tube holders and as you can see I've got some wire, it's just garden wire, it's quite thick so it's quite hard to bend but it's garden wire just wrapped around a Posca marker which was just the right size for holding the test tube and it worked out really good. I was originally going to make a test tube rack and I didn't have a drill bit the right size for the hole I needed and so I had to rethink and I'm really glad I did because these look really kind of wacky and that's the feel I was going for. I wanted the kind of crazy laboratory look to it and I think I achieved that in the end with all the spillages and whatnot. By adding the acrylic gems first here, it created really great effects when I poured in the resin and it just, all, all the bubbles that were trapped between those gems all rose to the top. And for a moment there, I felt like I really was a crazy mad scientist in my laboratory, <laughs> which really, that kind of suits me down to the ground because yeah, um, my craft room should be called the laboratory. I'm always, always um, inventing and coming up with new crazy things. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But yeah, I loved this bit. So there we have it. What do you think? I'm really happy with it. I love the way those neon colours light up. And yeah, I'm really happy with those. So those are the neon colours from Resin Pro, the mica pigments, and I think they're great. So yeah, I'm very happy with the results. And I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please let me know what you think. If you haven't already subscribed and you would like to do so, please do. And I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.